I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 of my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore, Boat, and Kayak. And you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. And here's the rig I'll be using in the video. It's a three ounce blue frog bucktail, a strip of fluke, and then the, uh, the teaser, which runs one foot above that, is a tsunami hollow teaser with a 5.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook. And in this case, I'll be using a six inch gulp grub. So the book covers uh, summer flounder fishing, also called fluke. Uh, right from the beach all the way out to uh, deeper ocean water. And this is one of the um, deeper areas covered in the book. This is 85 feet of water. I am 2.7 miles off the beach uh, fishing near an artificial reef. And this is as far out as I'll go in my kayak. Um, I pick my days. This is a calm day. Still have to deal with boat waves, which is uh, what I'm doing there as I, I turn my bow a little bit into these waves. This video will cover one drift, but I'm not going to run it in order. Uh, I'm going to show the big fish first because I know that's probably what a lot of the viewers want to see. And, and there we go. A goal that I had set for myself for the summer season was to catch a fluke over 10 pounds. And it didn't take long uh, into the fight with this one to think that you know maybe I had it here. The rod is a Tsunami Airwave, rated for 15 to 25 pound test line. The uh, Quantum Accurous Reel is loaded with 20 pound test braid. There's a lot of weight on the rod and it's taken a couple of nice runs for the bottom. Uh, I'm just making sure I keep a heavy bend in the rod, just, just keep this fish coming up. After I'm done with this fish and the video goes on to the beginning of the drift, I'll get more into the uh, tackle and technique and so forth. For now, just uh, let's just watch this. All right, so I'm soaked now, and uh, obviously the, the camera's got water all over it. So I didn't want to hang this fish by the gills on the scale. I, I didn't want to keep it. Um, I, I don't even have enough room to keep one this big. So what I did was I was ready for this. I had a bag that I um, first took the scale, put the bag on the scale to zero uh, the scale. And then... Uh, put the fish into the bag while it was still in the net and and now I'm going to release it. It was just a little bit over 10 pounds, maybe 10 pounds, 3 ounces. The, the number was changing a little bit, but it was right around there. And I just want to try to revive it a little bit. It hasn't been out of the water long. It's in good shape. It's going to get a little kick here and then it's going to go. There we go. So I was very happy to see a nice release there. Uh, like I said, it wouldn't have fit in my cooler bag, and if I can't keep it cold, there's, there's no point in keeping it anyway. And I, I really wanted to release a, a big fish like that. I have um, plenty of fluke fillet in the freezer, all vacuum sealed. So this is how the drift started. Um, like I mentioned, 85 feet of water. This is rapid vertical jigging. The rig is the same that I use in shore at the bottom of a uh, length of fluorocarbon. In this case, I'm using 25 pound test fluorocarbon. I usually use 20. Uh, I'm using 25 because I'm in deeper water, bigger fish, and there's some structure. Uh, there's a loop at the bottom for the bucktail on this piece of fluorocarbon on the terminal end of the rig. One foot above that is a dropper loop for a teaser. You can see this fish uh, is, is caught on the teaser, which is right above the bucktail. And that's a six inch gulp grub. Because I'm using the larger 6-inch grub, uh, I've moved up to a 5.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook. I usually use a 3.0 inshore when I'm using uh, the smaller gulps, but 
since this grub is, is quite thick, um, I, I thought it was better to go to a 5.0 to get a little more of the hook exposed. So that fish is around 20 inches. I have a 18 inch minimum limit. I'm just getting started here. I definitely want to bring uh, home a couple for dinner. So I've got my cooler bag and this thing uh, works very well. It's a, a canyon bag and I can easily fit a couple of six or seven pounders in there. I've packed it uh, real nicely on a couple of these uh, ocean reef trips. Uh, so I've got one in the bag and uh, it's off to a good start. And I mentioned this all being one drift uh, that drifts about 20 minutes. And I've got beautiful drift conditions here. I'm moving along, uh, I think it was about 0 0.8 miles an hour just with this light breeze. And since the drift is pretty slow, even though I'm in deep water, I'm able to stay down with uh, a three ounce bucktail. When the wind picks up, sometimes you have to go uh, you know, four, six ounces, uh, somewhere in that range to stay down. But usually when I'm out in the kayak, it's a calm day or else I wouldn't be out there. And under the calm conditions, um, two to three ounces often works. You can see it wasn't a very good net job, but it got done in the end. And that's a, a pretty decent one. I'm happy to get this. Again, it's, you know, I'm just a few minutes into this trip, so it's uh, going quite well. Okay, I'm done narrating. Uh, there's just a couple of more fish to be caught uh, prior to when I hooked up on that larger one. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and I encourage you to check out Fishing for Summer Flounder at flounderbook.com.